Alrighty. Well, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Uh, time for my and time once again for my pseudo cast. And um, let me make a little adjustment here, real quick. Okay. And um, and I'm also drinking a a can of V8 Energy peach mango flavored. And the music this time is going to be uh, Nazgal Jakul, uh, the tomb of the tomb of Galrak. So and yeah, I'm going with this time. I'm going with uh, regular dungeon synth again. I I don't really want to go through what I went through yesterday. Um, I did a I played a video of a a bunch of cats eating fish, but which is great stuff but unfortunately it also uh it also jacked up my file size to like four or five gigabytes it took a uh, I think the whole ordeal to get it all uh, uploaded and processed took about two hours and that's just to get it on YouTube I mean <clears throat> remember like I have been saying I don't upload these to just YouTube I upload these to Twitch as well so I'm doing double work so yeah I had a I actually had to cancel my stream or here let me let me go ahead and get the music going. <clears throat> but yeah, like I, but like I was saying, I had a, I had a, uh, I had to kill my stream early last night because uh, I still had to get my uh, my Twitch video. I had to get my my yes get yesterday's pseudo cast uploaded to Twitch before 7 p.m. So I still had a lot to do. So yeah, I'm gonna. I'm hoping that the file size on this is gonna be kept pretty small, cause it's just an image, and most of it's black too. So that takes up very little file space. But otherwise, this <coughs> this music here, this kind of surprised me. Um, it's a dungeon synth, and it kind of sound here. I can't hardly hear it. Let me let me turn it up a bit from my end. Okay, but yeah, I like it. But like I said, this kind of this kind of threw me off because uh, when this came up on my YouTube recommendations, I, I thought I thought it was like Norwegian black metal or something. It was just kind of be. like really super loud stuff, like Emperor or Burzum or something. But no, it's this. It sounds almost like Grawl the Goblin. Another thing, kind of, kind of reminds me of some of them. Uh, grape, kind of reminds me of the Grateful Dead, like some of them album covers. Like they have like skulls and skeletons, and there is this really big, really big theme of death. You know, death and dying and all that, and maybe a little bit of necrophilia on their album covers. But yeah, you listen to their music, and it's like, it's like, go see Uncle John's band or that truck in. On the open road, they just keep trucking on, you know, that kind of thing. So, one hell, that band is one hell of a curveball. Same with this music. This is like that, this is like that really lo-fi quality chip tune music. Um, but otherwise, I was for the most part <clears throat> basically just uh just been binge watching YouTube stuff most of the night. <clears throat> um, just watching some fruit fly vids, but uh, just like the uh, just like WatchMojo.com, the the titles on all these fruit fly videos are too clickbaity. Guaranteed 100% way to get rid of fruit flies. And every single one of them deals with, uh, like, nearly every single one of them is like fucking just, um, apple cider vinegar in a bowl. Guys, check out this latest ingenious method I came up with to get rid of all my fruit flies. I took, uh, apple cider vinegar and poured it in a bowl. And all of a sudden, within two hours, all the fruit flies were gone. 
It's like a lot of these videos have that same theme. Like I said, it's like... It's like WatchMojo.com. All their top ten lists. They're like real clickbaity. Like they're going to surprise the shit out of you. You know, like... Top ten greatest bass players of all time. Oh, wow. I wonder if Les Claypool is going to be number one. You know, check out the video. Well, no, he's not He's not number one, but he's number two. Um, I think it was either... It was either Flea or, um, bass player for The Who. John Antwistle. Yeah, I... Like, whoa, big surprise there, you know. God, ooh, top ten greatest rock guitarists of all time. I wonder if Jimi Hendrix is going to be number one. God, I've just got to see this. And number one, Jimi Hendrix. Oh, my God, I can't believe it. Oh, great, my sake of life. Whoa, you know, that kind of thing. So, but yeah, these Fruit Fly videos are, are, are pretty much becoming like that, too. And... In case anyone actually is wondering what I use to get rid of fruit flies, um, I forget the technical name for them, but I use a combination. It's um, they're like these uh, silver cylinder uh, fly strips. I think they're called, I think they're raid fly sticks or something like that. But like I said, they're um, they're so they're uh, it's cylinder shaped fly paper. You know, just basically silver fly paper wrapped around a around a cardboard cylinder and there's like um and there's there's kind of a there's kind of a white kind of a white cup or I should I, I should put that in quotes a white quote unquote cup at the bottom of it and the top as well it's got a little little white hook you can hang it on on stuff but um I use that I use that or excuse me I use them and I also um I also bought some uh tear off fruit fly traps but I don't use the traps I just use the, uh, the liquid that came with it squirt a little bit of that on the bottom catch, I can catch a whole bunch of them now because uh, one thing I learned about fruit flies um, I had the same problem probably about a year ago and I did the same thing I bought some uh, fruit uh, tear off fruit fly traps but one thing I noticed is uh, yeah it did catch some fruit flies but I also saw a whole bunch of those fruit flies just run, run around the top of the trap, just hanging out. And some of them were hanging out underneath. Some of them were, you know, hanging around the sink. So I don't think that I don't think fruit flies head straight to the food. Usually they'll stop and land nearby it, and they'll like take a break, and then they'll go in and eat. So yeah, so and um, uh, I the the one ray of hope in all these fruit fly vids that in, that I was watching about a year ago. One of them had the uh, raid fly stick. So, and she said she had the same experience as me. This stuff here works a lot better than those uh, tarot fruit fly traps. And even the, I, I think she did the tired old cliche, um, apple cider vinegar in a bowl. I think she's tried that too, but it didn't work out that well either. So. so. Oh. And another thing about fruit flies is apparently they hate the smell of lavender. So at the same time you're setting your traps, go buy some like um, Glade Lavender Potpourri. That uh, that uh, lavender fragrance spray. Uh, spray it and say your garbage cans. So it's kind of a, what I do is kind of a two prong attack. Like yeah, I'll set up the traps, but I'll also grab some uh, Glade Lavender Spray and just uh, spray the insides of the garbage cans to keep the fruit flies from getting in there because I'm trying to steer them over to my traps. Um, sometimes, sometimes I'll spray lavender directly into the sink drains as well. Again, try to keep the fruit flies from going down in there. You know, again, I'm trying to steer them into the traps. So, so two prong attack. Um, but still, wa um, still watching Do Not Eat videos. But this particular one here, he talks about uh banking and commerce. At the same time, he's also uh, I don't know if it's the program that's on City Skylines, but 
he was using some computer program, like a like a graphics a graphics design program to literally make a. I forgot which bank he was making, but he was he was literally making a bank, like making a bank building with this program. At the same time, talking about um, talking about banking and commerce. Well, um, this video here was um, he really ruined the shit out of it, cause. After like every, at the end of every seven, after at the end of every sentence, he's always right. So this bank came out in 1927, right? Or this what you know, or this wasn't gonna go over real well with the populace, right? That it, it, it it's freaking annoying, and he was doing this all throughout this video, so. I'm probably gonna end up uh, shit canning this one and going on to the next. But um, remember um, I think it was um, legendary fighting game player Rufflemonger. In some of his videos, he would do this too, like just, you just right, like at like at the end of every freaking sentence, it gets annoying. So, so because of that, but. As, as though we're by design, um, at, at the time I was, uh, at the time I was crying, UNCLE! Because of this video, um, a guy named, uh, Robert Reich, Robert Reich came up, uh, on my YouTube recommendations, um, something like, like, the system is rigged, how do we fix it? Okay, so I figure what the hell, click on that, I'm like, Damn, this is good stuff. Um, looked him up on the wiki. I guess he uh, he's got a long storied career. Like he was a, uh, uh, I think he was some advisor. He was like a, a he was an advisor of some kind to Jimmy Carter and Gerald Ford. Um, but I I think uh, he was like a he's like a secretary of labor, but I. I, I don't I don't know much else about him, but yeah, I was watching this video. I'm like, damn, this is pretty good, because uh, he wasn't really he he wasn't really a he was basically saying what I've heard before, like you know, one percent of the entire U.S. population controls ninety percent of the wealth. I mean, he was saying that you know, which is he, he's right to be sure, uh, but he was also he's basically saying you can pretty much ignore. You can pretty much ignore left and right, Republican and Democrat, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They're 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 pretty much they're pretty much trivial. The real problem is the the, the you know the rich one percent. George Carlin was saying, which basically George Carlin was saying the same thing too. You know, but he would refer to them as the owners, like the real owners of this country. I mean, not the politicians. Fuck the politicians. They're only there to give you the illusion. That you have a choice. You don't. It's an exclusive club. And you ain't in it. You know, and so on and so forth. So. I, so I guess uh, George Carlin really wasn't rabble rousing after all. He was, he was, he, he was basically right. So, yeah, um, I think I subbed Robert Reich. Um, I'm, I'm pro, I haven't watched. I've only watched that one video, but if I do watch any more, I'll, I'll probably just go with his most recent. I don't know, but like I said, he's a totally new YouTuber. I've never seen this guy before until now. I think a lot of his videos deal actually deal with economics. So, something that's probably going to go in one eye and out the other. <laughs> God, this music. It's like I said at the start of this cast, so I thought that this was going to be uh, Norwegian black metal music. But no, this is like Grawl the Goblin music. So. Um. Oh, um, side note of that. The, the Watch Mojo stuff. Uh, another YouTuber I watch from time to time called Not Just Bikes. 
They, he's got a new video out, but it was, it was another one that he shouldn't even have bothered. Uh, he did a, he did a bike ride to the, to a hardware store, but, uh, he, um, uh, he did kind of a scoring system. A guy named Ray Allen would do this. He's a basketball player. It's how he would practice, practice his shots. For every shot he make, he would give himself a point. For every shot he missed, he would subtract, he would subtract two. Um, this not just not just bikes guy. He did he he did just that. He uh he but he lives in the Netherlands. And um he used to live in Canada, but I guess one of his friends, one of his Canadian friends, actually did uh he did a bike ride in in Canada to the hardware store from from his house where he lived. Um, so he uh he took these two videos, one of himself in the Netherlands going to the hardware store and then he did that scoring system you know plus one on all the good stuff he encountered minus two on all the bad stuff so I mean those that have you know those that have watched his other videos it, this this is a totally pointless video to even watch I got like part way through it and no I think I got like two thirds of the way through it and I said man fuck this you already know the outcome I mean, again, those that have seen his other videos know that know that he's really big in the Netherlands, and he hates Canada. So yeah, naturally, the Netherlands got a score of like plus thirty or something like that, and and uh, the bike ride in Canada got minus thirty. Like I said, it was another, it was basically another Watch Mojo film, or another Watch Mojo video. You know what's gonna happen. It's kind of a waste of effort. Top of that, I've been uh, I've been watching a uh, another YouTube channel I watch from time to time. Or here, let me space slavery. Uh, stone meadow of doom. Oh, this is gonna be a stoner rock. Yeah, it's gonna be a. Uh, where? Let me at least listen to a few minutes of it. I mean, if it's like really laid back, um, really laid back music. Nope. What's the next one? I'll just do this. I'll go to. Like. Ozer Regroth. In the shadow of Gloomspire. But I'm probably not going to be on that much longer. So this is just temporary. But anyway, um. But yeah, like I was saying, it. Oh, I've been on uh, another channel I watch. Another channel I watch called Replay Burners. They uh, specialize in like playing retro games. But unlike some other, some other retro channels. These players are actually good. Like they could uh they could beat the game on one credit, that kind of thing. Whereas uh I've seen uh I've seen other retro game channels that sucked. Like the the players suck. Um and or use cheats and or um use ninety nine credits. I mean I mean the mo I mean the moment I, the moment I see uh I see a video that all all of a sudden starts going and like the number of credits like going up and up and up I kill the video and I go off to something else because you know with that kind of a player if you need 99 credits 99 credits ain't gonna help you so so yeah so watching watching some replay burners And I said this, and I said this yesterday too. Um, so sorry to sound like a broken record here, but uh, um, a guy named Jake Ryan, he gifted me a game called City Skylines. Um, I've never played this game before. I kind of set it up, you know, you know, turn off the full screen, set the 
put the graphics settings on medium because my computer isn't exactly a high-end one. It's basically a potato. Here, let me out. Sound check, sound check. Okay, still not too bad. So, um... But I don't... I'm still... I'm still trying to figure out a good time to play it because I'm still in the Bloons Tower Defense 6 right now. I'm still liking that game. But the problem is, is, um, one, I'm new to City Skylines, so I want to stream. I actually want to stream my first time playing it. I don't want to play, I don't want to play this game for the first time off stream. It just doesn't feel right. I want this to be ceremonial, for lack of a better word. And, um, so I'm going to have to make a hard decision tomorrow, or I should say later on today, because, uh, um, today is... The last day is my last night off. The rest of the week is my work week. And I know I won't be able to play City Skylines then. Because on my work week, I'm only going to be able to be on maybe like an hour and a half or so. And that game there, or for those that don't know, um, City Skylines is like a 2015 version of SimCity. So it's not the kind of game I could just pick up and play for like 15 20 minutes and then just put it down so i'm gonna need a i'm gonna need to set aside a huge block of time to play it but again i'm all i'm also really liking uh bloom's tower defense six as well though so like i said i'm gonna have to make a hard decision i'm leaning towards playing city skylines today while i still can and then just playing um Balloons Tower Defense 6 on my work week because I don't I don't need to commit a huge amount of time to that game, but again, we'll see come later on. So because uh Balloons Tower Defense 6, I just I just realized this yesterday, but the people that made the game Ninja Kiwi, they're based out in uh, New Zealand. So that would pretty much explain all the lag I go through whenever I play co-op. I mean, I thought it was just, I thought it was just shitty netcode. So for a while, I've been saying, uh, yeah, saying this game needs better netcode, preferably rollback. But again, I learned yesterday that this game is based out in New Zealand. So, you know, when you're, when the game is that far away from me, I mean, it, netcode's got to be shit anyway, no matter if it's a uh, delay or rollback. So. All the rollback in the world ain't gonna help. So that, so that makes um, all the lag I deal with in co-op more understandable now. Doesn't make it any more bearable, but <clears throat> more forgivable. So what I'm getting at on that is, uh, playing co-op require also requires me to set up, set aside fairly large chunks of time because as the game gets going, more towers are placed. Um. Combat's going to be more intense. More balloons are going to be out there on the screen. It's going to cause a major slowdown to the game. So, again, I have to set aside larger blocks of time in order to play co-op. Because it's it's one of those games where single player... It, I mean, single player is fun, but uh, so is co-op. Whereas um, many, ga many other games I've played... Um, where uh, you have to... You have to play with other players. It's not always fun. So, but it's it just... It, to me, it's just drudgery. Or it's, it's something that I dread doing. Not in this game. In this game, co-op is just as fun. If not more so than single player. So, it's, it's probably also one of the reasons why I'm really... I really tend to get pissy about the lag. Because I really like the co-op mode. I mean, in, in, in any other game, if there was a shitty connection between us, I'd actually, deep down, I would actually prefer that because, you know, I'm not a fan of the multiplayer in whatever game I'm playing. So, that's a good out right there. A bad connection. Bye, see ya. Didn't want to be here anyway. But again, not in Bloons Tower Defense 6. I actually want to be in there. So.
Yeah, this one don't. This one actually does sound a little bit synthy. I've listened to some of the dungeon synth I've listened to. It actually it it sounds too. Some of it sounds actually too realistic, for lack of a better word. You know, it doesn't. Some of the dungeon synth I've listened to doesn't really sound so synthy. Like I said, it's like they use an actual symphony orchestra. I mean, no. Dungeon synth should sound like it's being played with a synthesizer. Not with a fucking orchestra. Yeah, but, but anyway, um, I'm just going to go ahead and cut it off here. I've pretty much said all the things that I wanted to say this morning. And, um, and in an effort to try to avoid the fiasco that happened yesterday with, uh, with the four or five gigabyte video that I was try that I had to upload, I'll just definitely go ahead and cut it off here because the sooner I can get to uploading and processing, the better. Um, again, there was no, there was no animation in these, but I'm, right now I don't really want to leave anything to chance, so. So I'll just go ahead and kill it here. Uh, but hey, thanks for thanks for tuning in and listening to me, everybody. I appreciate that, and um, I should be able to do another one of these tomorrow morning, and it will be my last one for the week. And after that, you probably won't be hearing from me again until Sunday morning. So, but <clears throat> until then, though, thanks again for coming around, everybody, and see you all next time. Bye for now. <laughs>